Hello. How Hello. Are you? Um, welcome, everyone. Um, I think it's the first time we've done one together, Margaret, for a while, isn't it? It certainly is. And I realised that even of the uh, miles between us, we've obviously decided today's a pink day. <laughs> yes, we have. I just realised we're both um, are both a vision in pink. Very cool. Today. Perfect pink, perfect pitch. There we go. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, um, yes, yeah, so we we've come on here today to talk about um, perfect pitching for musicians. Um, and so how we're going to do this is um, obviously both of us work as music agents and um, also for projects. So Margaret is going to talk about this from the perspective of um the person writing the pitch and i'm going to talk about it from the perspective of um the person receiving and reading the pitch um so before we get started uh, do put any questions in the comments and we'll probably look at them at the end um unless you say something so fascinating that we have to mention it in the middle and uh <laughs> case, it's a very good pitch yeah exactly <laughs> attention grabbing there we go so Let's introduce ourselves a bit yeah. just to explain why it is, you know, we're actually in a good position to give a, give this, like, have this conversation uh, and offer this advice, which we know is extremely important. So, Katie, a bit about you first. So I've been working in the arts and particularly classical music for over a decade. And in that time, I've worked for... Um, Sorry, already distracted by a comment, which is because of the terrible spelling. Um, <laughs> Um, in that time, I've worked uh, mainly on the promoter side in, in the, uh, for orchestras, chamber music societies, festivals. Um, so I've read thousands and thousands of pitches um, for, you know, from performers, from composers, um, from other types of professionals, etc. Um, I've, al I've also worked as an agent, obviously, and do at the moment, and my my. Uh, business covers both sides of the agency and the promoter side so um, we have that unique perspective at Polyphony Arts but um, yeah so we so receiving pitches is um, a very good way to work out what you do and don't like about them <laughs> and Margaret how about you? Yes um, now obviously I work with Katie now but I'm actually a relative newcomer to working in the classical music field um, as an agent but um, what I have got in the background is a lot of a lot of experience writing. Um, I've been a journalist, um, print and podcast journalist um, before. Um, I'm also a writer. I've had three books published, also uh, a translation actually from German from the University Press way back when. And I actually used to teach um, at Harvard um, on a course that was called Expos. Uh, it was a rather infamous course because it was considered very difficult. But it was actually expository writing. Um, and that is obviously in the university context, that's academic writing. Um, but writing is writing. So, um, you know, actually it was an award winning course. Each year I taught it, I won an award for excellence in teaching. So I think when it comes to writing and knowing how to get your message, how your argument get, uh, um, comes across, I think both Katie and I are actually pretty well placed to, um, to help you with that. Right. So, um, well, if I'm doing that, let me start because obviously it starts with you and your pitch and what you're writing. So, um, first of all, you, the important thing is you are in effect, this is a, this is a selling exercise. I mean, it, it sounds a bit brutal to say it like that, but that's what's happening. It gets more nuanced, but you are trying to sell something. You're selling yourself. You are trying to present something to somebody that you want to take up, take you up on what you're offering. So what's really important is you are selling a story you are giving a story that you want someone to buy into so it's really important that you know what that story is be very clear about what it is that you want to say um and i know that sounds incredibly basic but you would be actually astonished um and the worst thing you can do the work the point at which you feel that the story is not your story or you don't know what the story is is because you're writing a pitch that feels generic or you feel you're writing what you ought to say. And I'm sure you've seen lots of those, Katie. Yeah. Indeed. <laughs> so that's important. First of all, know what it is that you want to tell, what you want to say. What you know, what's my narrative? What's my story? Um, because it's it's you will have a 
very specific story. You will have a story and you need to have one that you think is unique and will be interesting to the person you're pitching to. And then on the other side of that, and Katie will absolutely agree, um, agree with me on this, know what your target is looking for. Know what the person, I, I'm kind of calling us because we're banter back and forth. If I'm the pitcher, Katie's the catcher. We'll use the words pitcher and catcher in this. So um, what's your catcher? If you're pitching, is your catcher actually looking to catch the kind of thing you're pitching? So do a bit of research. Don't just get a list of names and send up blind. Do some background, and this is useful in several ways. One is because you can save yourself a lot of time. If you are pitching on behalf of a wind ensemble and you do your research, you can find out that what looked like a really nice festival only does strings. Those kind of things. Don't, don't pitch yourself as a violinist to a piano competition. I mean, it sounds basic, but you'd be surprised. The other thing is find out a bit about the organization, the promoter you're, you're trying to pitch yourself to because you want to make your pitch look as though it's not just about you. You've got, you can personalize it. it. There are ways in which you can show you're paying attention. You can say, for example, oh, I see in your 20th anniversary season last year, you had a concert with, you had a recital with X. Now I worked with X, that was, you know, what a wonderful choice. I worked with X on this occasion. That shows that you're paying attention to the person, the organization you're pitching to, and they will always appreciate that. Um, that already pushes you up the, up the ranking. Other, next thing, okay, so you've got that right. You've done your research, so you know what your story is. Why is it worth buying into? What do you, you know, and this is where you have to kind of blow your own trumpet. Um, and this applies to all musicians, not just trumpet players. Um, why, why are you worth, what, what is it? You've got to, you have got to have the confidence to know what your skills are and what you're offering. And that has to be, again, not too generic. Don't make it too generic. Oh, I'm a really great child. You know, I've, why? What, what is good about you? What makes you so good at what you do? And of course, what you need to do there is give it some pedigree. You know, what's your experience? What have you done? You know, what's your training? This can be particularly difficult if you're just fresh out of music college. I mean, I don't want to say our hearts go out to people in that position because you, you've really tried to sell a story, but you've got to spin, you're kind of spinning straw into gold at that point, but you can do it. Um, so that, that bears a lot of thinking about. And if that sounds like a lot, my next piece of advice, which Katie will completely agree with is, keep it reasonably brief keep it brief um because people don't have all the time in the world um to listen to you know five pages of your um life story and your trials and tribulations um as a aspiring classical musician even a successful classical musician so that's enough for me going on but i think i'll hand over to katie to pick up on some of those points from her from her perspective yeah i mean that's absolutely absolutely spot on i couldn't agree more um as uh, a receiver of what did you call it a catcher uh, is that what you said as a, as a catcher of um of pitches um there are sort of varying degrees of things in my mind that that make me um recognize them and obviously um i should say by the way that i do receive thousands uh, you know like probably tens every week and most promoters do so if you don't get a response it's not necessarily because it's a bad pitch it's just to do with sheer volume and it is a bit of a um an unfortunate truth about the um about the industry as it is with all sorts of other things like press and so on that it can be um that it yeah that it that it can be nothing to do with the quality of what you've actually done if you don't get anything um which does that leads me on to a separate topic which is following up and making sure you do that because it might just be that you caught someone at a busy moment and anyway that's not what we're really talking about today so uh, what i would say um the real so you want to catch someone's eye so the very first thing you need is almost like pitching to the press you need like a headline essentially so it's like why is this project going to be interesting for your festival or your concert society or your orchestra or um or whatever uh so that can be really obviously you know it can be like i've written a piece about um 
the moon and it says in your orchestra's mission statement that you only do pieces of music about the moon therefore i think this is an ideal pitch for you if you come across something like that then you know brilliant um and promoters can i mean that was obviously a, a bit of a uh a joke example but it, um, promoters can do a lot of favors to pitching musicians by putting as much information about what they actually like um on their website as possible um what I like to receive is something that's it makes it incredibly clear what the person does and this might sound really daft but often I receive pitches and I have to really work hard to find out what instrument the person plays um especially if they're not playing really obviously standard repertoire or there isn't a picture of them with their instrument right at the top um and I just think that that is like 101 we have to understand what you play um we have to understand what you're offering as well. So if you're a pianist, is it, you know, I, an idea of repertoire is essential, not necessarily a nuanced programme, but like I'm doing a piece, theme, I'm doing a programme themed around this, it's for the Beethoven centenary, it's female composers, it's whatever it is, you know, it's like an idea of what you're doing. The next thing I want to know about is quality. Um, and that doesn't necessarily mean that people will only ever book the um, most famous or most established in their careers musicians for personally for whole chamber music i book a mixture of very established musicians and um up and comers and a lot of places do do that so this is obvious this is often a place which is difficult for people to um to feel like they're putting the right things but you have to have a section that makes people understand what they're getting in terms of um kind of when i say quality I mean, you know, like career stage or um, so I love to see quotes, basically press quotes, ideal. If there's a massive quote from like the Strad or the Guardian art section or something saying how brilliant it was, then that's ideal. If it's a teacher giving a testimonial or an audience member giving a testimonial or something that also gives me as well as giving me a sense of the quality gives me a sense of how I will be selling this to my audience so obviously as promoters we have to write marketing copy if that's essentially done for us and we can see that what we're going to be saying is we've got the quintessential pianist for Clara Schumann you can already see that tagline you can already see how that's going to fit in for your audience so I think this is a really key point actually is pitching for um with a mind to how your work will appear in a concert brochure this again this has gone a little bit chamber music specific in my head but you know the principle applies um mm. across the board um so we've got the headline what you're doing what you play quality why it's special i've just won kathleen ferrier i've just um won royal overseas league um i've just graduated from x university and i'm making my first step into the professional world that tells me a different story um i've you know been playing in wigmore hall and carnegie hall and all over the place for 40 years again it tells a different story um but as margaret says within all this um keep it brief um, uh, all of this which i haven't kept very brief uh is probably three lines um <laughs> um keep it real and genuine and just don't assume that I know anything about you and I know that that sounds and that you know because there are nobody has heard of everybody even if you are famous <laughs> um it it's not so much about whether because it puts the expectation on the promoter to have heard of everybody um and it's almost embarrassing if you haven't whereas if you're like I am this person you might remember me from the royal opera house <laughs> that yeah. clearly indicates to me that you're very famous but it doesn't actually put any onus on me to have personally experienced your work before um so i think there's that as well in terms of like um you know it's, it's like assume we know nothing and and tell us what's really important um I think that's probably my that's my main tip really i do have a um and framework wise all i really want to know is what you play instrument wise any unique selling points um what kind of thing you're proposing repertoire wise and how good it's going to be that's what i want to know yeah i think um you've got you made a really interesting point there katie because um 
there's a, there's a, there's a two say, stage process, a two stage sale going on. You've got to sell yourself to the promoter. The promoter's thinking, I've got to sell this to my audience. And that, so you've got to think, you've got to think they are looking for something that's saleable that they can present to their audience. The audience is going to want to come and hear and buy tickets to hear. So it's worth bearing that in mind. Um, and again, of course, that comes back to doing your research, um, you know, showing that you understand what, um, you know, as I say, if you've got um, whole chamber music, just imagine the headline, um, you know, Colliery Brass Band makes big splash at chamber music festival is not going to fly. so that you know if that's the basics if those four if those four things are the basics um you know what is it instrument wise what is it musically why is it good and how can i envisage selling it to my audience um yeah. then you can add other things on and my favorite thing that anyone can ever say to me in a pitch for whole chamber music ever is Oh, I've noticed that you do your concerts on Thursdays, which we do always. And I'm like, ah, a whole load of the um, like logistical planning and date seeking part of this has just been avoided. <laughs> you know, this is something that I think after I've got through the initial like, you know, is it? Is it, do I understand it or do I want it? And I'm starting to think about booking it. If it then says, here are a few dates on, um, uh, you know, in sort of, at a time when I think that you generally book concerts it just feels like you know the relationship is always starting to burst. sales is all about relationships as Margaret said this is sales as much as no one really likes to think of it is it it is um and that's you know a huge step taken towards the building of that relationship um is having taken the uh the trouble to find out what's on the website and I do think that's a two-way street by the way I think that promoters can um, really help people out by by putting a process for submitting you know I think I'm not sure if it's on the whole chamber music website but I think I say to people when they pitch at like a time of year when I'm just not even going to be thinking about it for months I always say I am filing this but if you wanted to write to me in the winter that's when I'm doing my programming so it might be you know that's a good time to get a reminder I think places that have a process for this um and an and an idea and i've read some great ones when i've been researching for our artists to pitch to them i've read some festivals have a thing on and it says stuff like our audience is really string focused so you know feel free to tell us about your wind or vocal projects but really um we're quite unlikely to take them and that just it's just quite i think it's quite respectful to the people who are looking for the work to kind of put that information um on website yeah. so you know yeah, so you're, like, you're, 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 you feel like it's appreciated when someone's read it. <laughs> so, you know, it's like, this is what we do. So however world-class your pet sousaphone player may be, this probably isn't the home for them. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so what, also when you're writing, what's it? What's also important? Because it can be, it doesn't necessarily come natural to people. And so I think musicians, Katie's talked about this before, and in the courses, the uh, some of the other courses Katie runs, we... You know, she talks about the money mindset and how to the imposter syndrome. We spend so much of our lives growing up doing music for free that suddenly switching to it where it's something that you are entitled to ask for money for um, is quite a mind. It's quite it's quite a mindset you have to enter. And it so you've got to be confident in what you're doing. And also you've got to understand when you're writing the pitch, it's not something that will necessarily come naturally to you, because if it did, you're probably not listening to this anyway, because you've already got it nailed understand your style there is not a generic style the thing about a pitch is that there's no we're talking about these are all pointers there's not um it's not algebra so there's a definite answer and if you don't do this you will get it wrong and if you don't do exactly that you know you will get the answer right it's it's a bit more nuanced than that but um there's a limit to how to how much you can stress over it understand your style understand your voice if you're not sure, if you think it sounds stilted, it probably does. You know, if you're playing a piece of music and you hit a wrong note, you know, you can hear it immediately. You need to develop that sense in the way you write. Read what you've written to somebody who knows you well and says, does this sound like me? Does this come across like me? Um, genuinely. Um, so I think some of the mistakes you can make are to be stilted. Um, the other thing is that you need to mistakes you can make are 
is to be either be a pushover. You need to know what you're offering and you know there are boundaries around what you can do and what you're willing to do and what you're able to do. If if you if people come back and go, well, you know, can you do this? There's always a reasonable negotiation. You know, if you know somebody went to Katie and said, um, I'm going to be in the area in October, have you, you know, would you be interested in booking me for your October slot? Have you filled it yet? And Katie might go back and say, Well, no, but actually you might work for us in February. I appreciate, you know, you haven't got something there. Don't go, no, it's October or nothing. Um, yeah. <laughs> that, you know, being, that's the opposite, you know, that that's not helpful. Um, but uh, so, you know, have flexibility, but don't be either what I would call abject, you know, yes, whatever you want, whatever you want, I'll do it. Um, yes, you want me to sew an entire purple suit for this concert. Yes, of course, I'll do that. Um, and because the danger is don't sound needy. I know at the moment everybody is really hurting. And most of us, when we're writing this, we are feeling pretty needy. But don't let that come across because um, you, don't, you, you don't have to. You need to be confident about what you're selling um, and clear in, in what you're writing um, mm. and your style. Um, there's just been a couple of questions. Would you recommend including recordings as audition pieces or photographs? Well, this is my view, but, you know, Katie can take this up. Photographs, yeah, especially with the instrument, because that can be a bit of a hot tip as to what you actually play. Um, but also recordings. I would not... Recording as... Um, of data files are huge. Um, if you're going to do that, include links to things like YouTube or um, even Dropbox. Don't add. Okay. Yeah. You know, don't add huge files. They're just a mm. pain in the ass. And half the time, the email, the I mean, the emails won't arrive because the the data is too big. Mm. Um, so be conscious about the size of the files you're sending. Is what I would say. What would you say about that, Katie? Uh, I, well, yeah, I totally agree about that. I would use SoundCloud or, as you say. Um, uh youtube or something like that as links but i would definitely include it because ultimately we want to hear um what we're getting um and also definitely in different times include invitations to um concerts if you're giving any um yeah definitely because that's really nice and i i also feel far more compelled to reply to an email that's invited me to a concert because I automatically want to say whether I can, you know, I want to acknowledge that invitation and say, I'd love to, uh, but I can't, or, you know, yes, please, or something like that. So I definitely um, recommend doing that. Um, and yeah, we do, we do want to hear um, what you've got. I would also recommend as well having um, a website behind your stuff if you can um a good clear one that just says um i feel like i'm straying into territory that i covered last week now but um but yeah a good clear one that sort of says like um what you do but doesn't necessarily have to be all bells and whistles but it's really nice if someone's interested for them to just be able to click through and get something that kind of sums up who you are um and what you do and just to follow on from the, the other thing you were saying before that margaret about um about sort of what how you know how to place this it's so important and um Stephen here said about um being honest is honesty is so important genuineness is so important um coming across as trying to make yourself sound um something that you aren't it does come across it's totally acceptable to be at whatever stage in your career you're at you don't have to worry about that everybody starts somewhere um find the selling point find the thing that you want to talk about that makes you really excited about your work um and don't worry about what you've not done and that is a, a backdrop that i really want to say about all of this is ultimately all the advice we can give about pitching is, is all good and hopefully it's useful but um please don't not pitch because you think you can't do any of the things that we've said here just do it anyway you know just yeah. try and try and find something that you're comfortable with and you're happy with uh as margaret said use a friend you use somebody as a sounding board and say how does this come across to you um and uh you know and just go for it because there's nothing worse than feeling as though you need to have recorded the entire back catalogue of 
Beethoven sonatas and have them readily available on SoundCloud um, before you can possibly start pitching yourself um, out to perform, you know, that's just never going to get you anywhere. Um, so just fi find your place of of confidence. <laughs> and yeah, no, give right. it a go. Um, place of confidence, and that's quite a hard place to find. Um, it's also find that place where you've got you, not absolute confidence, but enough. And even if you haven't got there, just do it anyway, because I think the other big piece of advice is don't overthink it, because you can get to the point where you, you would never send anything out. There's a point at which, as I say, it's not algebra. Nobody's going to go, you got that answer wrong. It should have been 95 when you've written 107. It's not like that. It's not Absolutely. like that. And it's, it's all about the project ultimately because we can share with you the uh, the for, what we think is the ideal formula or layout for a pitch. But ultimately, um, if you're not excited about the project or your project isn't um, doesn't have an exciting kind of um, line behind it, then that is probably going to come across. So if you really can't find any selling point whatsoever and or, or like other people that you are talking to about it can't either, then maybe it's worth rethinking the project. <laughs> Yeah, um, and or you know finding you know niche projects absolutely fine but find the people that want the niche so you know um the the places that will do contemporary music happily etc if that's your niche not that it's that niche but you know um think about your audience as well and it's not you know you don't have to play everywhere no that's you right you need the you know the good places that's kind of that's the thing about also doing the research and um yeah, if you're not quite sure about your pitch, don't send it to everyone on your list. Send, you know, send a goodly chunk out first, then see what kind of feedback you get because you may actually re rework what you're doing slightly based on that. Um, but I think I was telling Katie earlier that in terms of rethink, if you overthink things, you can become very paralyzed. You get to the point where you can't, you're so terrified that you haven't actually got it absolutely right. And I'm not talking about proofing, proofread. Oh, for God's sake, proofread because there's nothing worse than, you know, but if somebody sends something out with loads of errors in it, it doesn't, you know, yeah, have a good impression. Fonts as well. Make sure it's all the same font. <laughs> yes. You wouldn't believe how many I get where it'll be like there's a heading and it's in like point twenty of one font and then it's like something. Else. Honestly, I've lost interest before I've even got past that. I'm like, whoa. This is a complete cut and paste job. This person. <laughs> You know, they can't even, yeah, no, I agree with you. But the, so I've got this great little poem, which is about how if you overthink things, it can actually paralyze you. And um, it goes, a centipede was happy quite until a frog in fun said, pray which leg comes after which, which raised her mind to such a pitch. She lay distracted in a ditch, considering how to run. And I, I always remember that from being a child, because it's true. If you overthink things, you can become quite paralyzed. Absolutely. Just do it. But do your homework first. Do the best job you can, but know the point to which it's like, I'm going to send it now. You know, I can't. Yeah. I've done as much as I can. Absolutely. So we're going to write this up into a blog post so that it's um, so we've sort of chatted around it. But so it's sort of like the elements that um, that a pitch needs, uh, some tips for striking the right tone, etc., and finding the um, the way of doing it that suits you, like as we've talked about. Um, and we're going to put that together shortly and release it. And then uh, we have a special surprise for the viewers of this live. That we have a we have a new product to share with you. Um, it's called Perfect Pitch uh, with Polyphony Arts, and we're launching it on June the first. And um, it is basically um, a service whereby you can send us your pitch, and we will perfect it for you. Um, I'm putting details on the website. I have just launched it on our website, literally just now, and it is at polyphonyarts.com forward slash perfect pitch with polyphony art. Um, and there is a special offer. If you sign up before the 1st of June, you can have 25% off. So a special launch offer just for people who are watching this live. Yeah. So we're very excited about that. <laughs> and um, we're reading your pitches. Yeah, no, that'll be great. Of course, as a double bass player, the great joke was perfect pitches, throwing a double bass in a skip without touching the sides. But so, <laughs> yeah, so this is what, so we we think this is really important service to help because 
um, rather like Katie's course on how to be our own agent, which looks a bit counterintuitive. You know, why would you do that? Because we know there is a lot of you out there who can't necessarily, you know, afford a full time agent. But, you you know, we do want to, you know, we, we do understand what it's like starting out. So, you know, we, we do want to use our expertise to help um, to help you musicians out there as much as possible. So we're really yes, we're really excited about this product. Um, Absolutely, and um, we, you know, it, it just like a, a tweak of wording or something, and it can make all the difference. And perhaps you just need a boost of confidence in what it is you're doing, anyway. You know, and so another pair of eyes to say this looks so great. You know, or, um, so we're, uh, you know, that's what this is aimed at. So all about boosting that confidence and uh, and getting those gigs in the diary, especially at a time like this. Absolutely. So well, there we go. Um, is there anything else you'd like to say about Perfect Pitch? Do we have any more questions? Um, I think not. Um, my dad very sensibly suggested not inviting anyone to a concert in Southampton if the promoter is in Edinburgh. That is a, that is a good point in that example. I have to say that as the artistic director of Whole Chamber Music, I get invited to a lot of concerts in London and I'm fairly likely to consider, well, I'm def I will always consider going to them because I, in again, in different less isolated times i'm in london quite a lot so i wouldn't necessarily say don't ever invite anyone to a concert that's outside where they live but obviously london being a place where most people who work in the arts are sometimes is um is particularly um i mean you what know. you can you can say because it's always good to say not just these this is the work i've done but also i've got these engagements coming up so you know i'm acting mm -hmm. an active other people have liked me enough to book me and you can say um, I've got these concerts coming up, you know, in Southampton, Malvern, you know, Gloucester. And I appreciate that, you know, you're not in that neck of the woods. You know, I appreciate you're in, you know, East Yorkshire. But if you were, you know, if by any chance you were there, you know, I would be delighted to arrange, you know, a ticket for you. Mm, exactly. Nobody's going to mind, nobody's gonna mind that because you've... Mm. Uh, you know, you know, you're not oh, yeah, because you've acknowledged it and you, you've understood that the person isn't that likely to be able to go <laughs> or yeah. certainly local anyway but yeah um great well i think we've uh, uh we've also been asked if we enjoy our picnic we had a picnic yesterday didn't we margaret a very socially distanced picnic. Picnic. um, um but yes. margaret's birthday yesterday Happy birthday. <laughs> so that was extremely nice um, very enjoyable. Right. So if we've, uh, if we've answered all of those questions, I will say goodbye. So thank you so much for joining us today. Um, and to find out about our upcoming events, um, receive the latest guides and advice for developing your career as a musician, please sign up to our newsletter at www.polyphonyarts.com forward slash mailing dash list um do check out the new perfect pitch product as well that we've put um in the comments just here as well so that's um polyphonyarts.com uh slash perfect pitch with polyphony arts with dashes in between the words i'm not going to say all those dashes um we'd love to see you on our socials if you're not already um facebook twitter and instagram at polyphony arts and this video will be up on our youtube channel soon um, as well as a blog post summarising the tips for a perfect pitch. Um, so, yeah, and if you find these videos helpful, please do leave us a review and let us know if there are any topics that you'd like us to cover. Um, next week, uh, we have a return from Stuart Chell of Chell Perkins Fundraising, who is going to talk to us on Tuesday at 11.30 about maximising your fundraising potential from your own network. Uh, last time we talked about grant fundraising, grant fundraising which was really useful and this time he's going to talk about fundraising from your personal network which is using things like youtube um youtube uh, monetization um paypal donation pots on live streams patreon um and that kind of thing so that would be really useful and practical as well so we're looking forward to that next tuesday yeah so i hope to see you there Yes, thank you very much. I to say, just you, while you're leaving, but you can yes. listen back. Yes, Ellie, hello. Sorry, yeah, you. Can. Hello, goodbye. <laughs> yes, hello, goodbye. So, but yes, you can listen. You can always listen back. And as Katie just said, these videos do go up on our YouTube channel yeah. for um, for the benefits of posterity. That means <laughs> you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, then. Thank you so much for listening. Goodbye. Thanks a lot. Bye.